Hello also in this video we are going to see how can we create target files dynamically in IICS. Now let's look at the problem statement. So this is my source table and every employee in my table has some job ID and let's assume like, like my requirement is uh, I need to create uh, a separate file uh, for each job ID. So uh, like all employees belongs to SA rep representative, right? They will be there will be a separate file likewise. So if there are like let's see how many uh, job ID, right? Or instead of this thing, I will take the group by. All right. So there are eighteen job IDs, and each job ID will have so let's say order by two descending. So uh, when I uh, run my mapping, uh, I will have 18 files created and each file will have this many number of records, right? Corresponding like how many employees are there available for that particular job, okay? So this is my problem statement. So what we can do, it's very simple mapping. So uh, the very first thing which we have to do is we'll have to uh, create the new file connection. So I do not have that right now. So if I go to administration, See, I just have SQL Server connection, so I will create a new one. And let's say on-prem fat flat file, flat file, runtime environment, I will specify the directory, code page, Windows Latin, test connection, perfect, and save. Okay, now let me go to, let's create the mapping now. Now we'll first create a simple mapping. We'll just dump the data and then we'll modify that map mapping. So I will create and mapping, mapping, create. And okay, so let me add expression and uh, let's add a sorter transformation as well. Very sorter. Perfect. And let me rename SRC employee source. So my source is SQL Server. Table is employees table. Come on. expression okay and i don't need to modify anything there in sorter as i said like we need to create file based on the job id so i will sort the, my file EMP job ID, right? So incoming field, there is no change. All incoming fields we need to pass. And the sorting condition would be job ID. Perfect, I will save it. And we just need to specify the target file now. PGT employees uh, incoming field target now target is flat file object I will select the object as create new at runtime uh, let's say static handle special case keep the decimal use dynamic file name for now i will just use static file name let's say employees employ employees okay and let's say it has to be comma separated row delimiter treat consecutive elements as one uh, this is all okay or maybe CSV. It's 
as I have mentioned, it's comma separated. So changing the my result over here is okay. Because here I have mentioned comma separated. Even if we don't specify that dot csv, it's fine. Let me remove that. That's okay. I mean, it doesn't matter. Uh, that is fine. We don't need to change anything here. Header rows option is all fine. Okay. Target field name, target mapping, nothing. Save. And let's trigger it. I should have renamed that mapping, but that's fine. I will rename it later. Let's see if the file is getting created. Perfect. So I do have my employees file. And if I open that, I will have my record sorted based on the job ID, ideally. So account, yeah, I see account assistant. And if I go at very end, everything is with ST and ST Clark. Yeah, so my records are sorted with job ID. Now the thing is, the requirement is, I should have a separate file for each job ID. All right, so what we can do is, so, if I go back to my mapping, by some way, when the job ID gets changed, it should create a new file, okay, dynamically. Okay, so the very first thing what needs to happen is if I go to my target, the file uh, should get created dynamically, okay, use the dynamic file, okay, that's how the file should get created. Otherwise, if the static, there will be only one file. On what basis the file should get created? So now we have to specify the name, right? So it's supposed to be based on job ID. That is what our requirement is. Perfect. Now this is all okay. However, there is one more thing which will have to do. If I run this guy now, so let's see what happens. If I let, let me run this. Let me delete this guy. Let me run this. So I have mentioned to create the files dynamically. And I have specified job ID as a column. So it's still created only one file. Okay, that is so this AC account might be the very first name. So if I order by one, not descending, let's say ascending. Yeah, so it took the very first name. Okay, that is not what we wanted. We want a separate file for each job ID, not a single file. So for that, what we can do, it's very simple. We just need to add. So if I go back to my mapping, we just have to add a transaction control transformation in between. So basically, We are creating a separate transaction okay for each job id so let's say tct based on job id incoming fields are fine so on what basis we have to change the transaction or, or control that transaction based on if field value change so what field value job id so if job id changes so let's say we, this is the first record when the second record comes in we'll have to commit the first record so that's the reason why will specify commit before, all right? If it changes, then commit before. Otherwise, continue the time transaction. I will save it. Okay, and let me delete this one. Let me rerun. Let's see. Yeah, as you can see, like each file, have, so like those, I mean, how 18, 18, but if I delete this guy, so 
created 18 files and those many job IDs we have 18. Now let's uh, let's validate a single file. So SRF should have 30 records. Yeah, it does have like it must be having 30 records, right? So we can maybe check a smaller one. Let's say SA man should have five records. Yeah, it does have five records. All right. So so that's it. That is how like using based on transaction control transformation, we can control the transaction 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 scope. We can say, and uh, we can create the files dynamically. Okay, so thanks for watching this video and see you in the next video.